this lecture will cover the dermatophytes. The genus of dermatophytes that we will discuss will be Trichophyton, Microsporium, and Epidermophyton. They all cause dermatophytosis, which is an infection of the keratinized tissue, which includes the hair, the skin, the nails. You may be familiar with ringworm. They are all intermediate to slow growers with a worldwide distribution, and they can be transmitted to the host via soil or animal or man-to-man. -man. So you are probably already familiar with a couple of the different infections that are caused by the dermatophytes. Um, a couple that you're probably most familiar with are jock itch, tinea cururus, or athlete's foot, tinea pedius. Now with these infections of the hair and hair follicles, it can actually be the hair follicle itself, it can be the ectothrix or the outside of the shaft, or it can be the endothrix, the inside of the hair follicle um, inside the hair shaft and it starts at the follicle. And you can see an image here in the upper left hand corner where the infection has actually crusted around the hair. Infections of the nails include fingernails and toenails. You can see an infection down here where it has infected the toenail and around the edges of it in the skin. Infections of the skin are typical with this ringworm appearance, and you have the infection of the organism around the outside edge, but you also have, in the inside, you have a clearing where the organism um, has worked its way out, and the inside is actually healed and not infected with the organism anymore. Specimens submitted for diagnosis and workup include hair, skin scrapings, nail scrapings, and clippings. KOH can be used to look at the hair to see if there's any sort of infection um, inside the shaft or outside of the shaft of the hair. You can also use a woods lamp which uses a UV light and the organism itself will fluoresce um, in the presence of this light, but it's only certain organisms that will do this. So it's usually used more for um, looking for the source of the organism uh, based on its ability to fluoresce, and that infects animals. Usually your pets could be a carrier. So you can see this cat up here that is infected with the organism who would potentially transfer that to its owner. With your cultures, you could use SAB media with or without um, inhibit inhibitory agents. Of course, it would be incubated at 30 degrees for about four weeks. And you would observe the colony morphology and you are also looking um, for the macros microscopic morphology to look for microconidia and macroconidia. Now we'll talk about the trichophyton organisms. They cause infections of the feet, the body, the scalp, the nails, and the beard. These organisms do not fluoresce with the woods lamp, so if you were to use it on an individual, you would not see any sort of fluorescence. They do invade the hair shaft and they fill it with arthrocnidia and they can also form on the outside of the hair shaft. When we identify these, we are looking for macroconidia. Um, they typically are smooth with a club shape and they have a thin wall. And the trichophytons do not typically have um, many macroconidia. The microconidia are spherical. Um, they can be power form or teardrop shaped and they can be club shaped, and they're usually a lot more of the microconidia. Trichophyton mentographides can infect you from animal to human or from human to human. 
it infects the hair, skin, and nails. And with hair infections, you, you look for this particular organism to peripherate the hair. So this can be by looking at it microscopically straight from the host so that you are looking to see if the organism has penetrated the hair or you can do a special test um, inside of a tube to look and see if the organism has penetrated the hair. With this particular organism on culture, it is a rapid grower and it is urease positive. The color of the culture plate can be um, buff to powdery with a white cottony or granular type appearance or it could be kind of downy like a little bit fluffy. Um, the microscopic appearance you are looking for spiral hyphae. So up here at the top you can see some of these hyphae that look similar to like what a grapevine does, how it kind of makes that little cool. Your macroconidia, which are your larger ones, they are a cigar shaped and you can see up here at top where they're kind of elongated cigar shape. They have a narrow attachment to the base. Um, none of these you can really see that attachment, but it would just be a real slender attachment um, towards the base and you can see how it kind of narrows at the end. They usually have inside of those macroconidia two to five septa. So you can see a couple up here in this one that I circled where you can see some of those little separations and of course as it gets closer to the end down here um, where the stain's a little bit darker they're a little harder to see but you may only see two or five of those little separations. The microconidia, which are the smaller ones, um, they tend to be more clustered. So you can see several small ones in this top image. This bottom image, you can see more of the smaller ones that look like grapes on a vine. Um, and they are usually just along some of the hyphae. So you can see how the hyphae kind of comes out a little bit and they're all kind of scattered around that hyphae. Trichophyton rubrium is transmitted man to man. It most commonly infects the skin and the nails and it does not uh, perforate the hair, it does not invade that shaft. With the culture, um, again I'll remind you that you do not need to know the culture appearance for the certification. However, it is good to be familiar with for clinical or for working. So with this organism, it can be white to pink. Uh, if you're looking at it macroscopically from the top, it can be fluffy, granular, or it can have some folds. So this picture here at the bottom, you can see where the organism has some little folds in it. So you can see some of those little indentions from those folds and it just kind of heaps up. Uh, the reverse side, if you flip the plate over, it is this bright cherry red color here up top. The macroconidia, which are the larger ones that are coming off of those hyphae, you can see how they are cigar shaped, they're elongated, and then they have those little septa right there and it can be about three to eight of those in one of those macroconidia. So here at the bottom, you can see that elongated shape. The dye on this particular image makes it a little hard, harder to see those septa, but you can see a few in a couple of them where you can see that division. And I'll remind you too that the trichophyton or thinned wall so with this wall right here, and you'll see a little bit of a difference later, it's just very thin. You just see the outside edge of the macroconidia. The microconidia, the small ones, are kind of a teardrop shape. So in this little drawing here, you can see how they're real small. 
and they come right off of the hyphae itself so you can see them kind of coming off the edge and if you look at the top corner you can see where those are really small coming off the edge of that hyphae so you can see them just kind of sticking up everywhere um, and all of these little little um, microconidia and at the bottom image it's it's a lot of them so you again trichophytons have more the microconidia than they do the macro trichophyton tonsurians is transmitted man to man it is the cause of tinea capitis, sometimes referred to as black dot. Um, it doesn't invade the hair shaft itself, so if you were to look at that under the microscope, you would see the organism itself growing inside of the hair shaft. Culture requires thymine to grow. It is urease positive. It can be white to tan to yellow or rust color, suede to powdery. It can be wrinkled with uh, a heaped up center or it can be sunken in. The picture here at the bottom shows that rust color and you can see where it has those little wrinkles in it. This almost looks like a foreign planet. The center here is kind of heaped but you can also see the edges of it kind of sunken. The microscopic appearance, the macroconidia, the large ones, you can see have this weird little kind of balloon type shape, like you're getting ready to make some sort of balloon animal out of it. Here at the bottom, um, or up under that top one, the middle one here, you can see the macroconidia that's kind of um, ballooned out and it's got this kind of irregular shape on the side. The microconidia can be teardrop shapes. So you see an example here in the end or they can be more clubbed shape. You can see this here is a little bit more of a club shape. I didn't quite get my arrow right there. They can vary in size. They alternate along the sides of the hyphae. So you can see this hyphae here where they're just kind of going on opposite sides. Um, I think that's about it to explain on this one. Trichophyton by Elysium is transmitted man to man primarily seen in the Mediterranean region of the Middle and Far East and in Africa. It infects the hair, the skin, and the nails. It is slow growing. It starts as a cone shape that's kind of cream. And you can see in this middle picture where it starts off kind of cream colored. And then it, as it ages, it turns to a pretty violet color. It can be waxy in appearance, and then it can also be very heaped and folded so you can see the image in the middle where they kind of look like mountains and then at the bottom you can see that real pretty violet color. The microscopic appearance, there are generally no macroconidia or microconidia. They form the um, image like you see here at the bottom and the top where you have the Chlamydia conidia, where you have these um, large little pop belly looking things here in the center. Um, you can see some up top as well, where they kind of just pop out along those hyphae. Microsporium are identified based on their microscopic appearance. The macroconidia, the large ones, they are spindle shaped. They have a rough wall that is econulated. It's kind of got little spikes around the edges. And it's very thick. The, they also have four or more septa, except for the microsporium nanium species. They only have about two. The microconidia are very small. They can be club shaped. And they are along the hyphae, um, kind of attached laterally, or they can have little short conidia fours attaching them. With the cultures, they do produce aerial hyphae, so they can, can be a little bit fluffy. They are velvety, powdery, globulous, or cottony. And the colors can range from white to buff to cinnamon to brown.
Microsporum adwinii is passed man to man, and this has been associated with um, children with tinea capitis, so it can be transmitted through infected hairs on like hats or on upholstery combs, just children sharing things. It infects the hair shaft um, and it will actually fluoresce under the woods lamp. The culture is slow growing with very poor growth on rice grains. So if you look at the image here in the center, you can see the, adu, the Microsporium aduinii growing here. It just leaves this brownish color. It doesn't actually grow like this other Microsporium species here. The culture itself can be light gray to tan, very velvety, and you can see how it's kind of got that little fluffy type look to it. The reverse side is a salmon pink to reddish brown, so you can see that reddish brown appearance here. With the microscopic appearance, the microconidia are very rare. And the macroconidia are also rare, but when you see them, you can see sort of like a distortion to them here. They typically aren't, the diagnosis isn't based on um, culturing or the microscopic appearance of this organism. It's basically based on ruling everything else, else out. Microsporium canis is passed from animal to human, causes ringworm in children and adults, and it is spread by infected pets particularly. So you can see poor little Fluffy up here in the corner with his pitiful little face saying, it's not my fault I gave you ringworm. But they can be screened as the cause, and you can see the round little fluffy's nose here poor little baby where it just kind of fluoresces with that woods lamp on humans if you were to use that wood lamp on the hair itself or to look at the, the hairs growing on the scalp then you would see that fluorescence there as well with culture it does grow rapidly and it can be granular or fluffy in appearance and what's characteristic about it is if you can see these edges here where they just kind of look like um, got a little bit of a lemon color to them and then when you flip them over you see this bright yellow lemon color here as well microscopic appearance with the macroconidia you can see many of these very large spindle shapes so you can see how it gets narrow tapered at the ends um, some kind of, sometimes they can kind of have a little curved end to it. These, these here don't show that very well. But you can see the wall is a little bit thicker. So you can actually see that wall of these versus the trichophyton where they, they were a little thinner. So you couldn't see that outside edge. So you can see how that wall there doesn't really take up that dye like the others did. Four to eight septa, so you can see how they have larger septa divisions in the center. And then as it gets closer to the tapered ends, you can see how they get a little bit smaller. So you can see several in this one here. Microconidia are usually very few. You can see a few of those in this little corner. Microsporium gypsum is transferred from the environment, the soil, to the human. It's rare human or animal transmission. It infects the skin and hair, and if you were to use the woods lamp on these species, um, on this species, then it would be negative. Culture is very rapid growth. It's flat with these irregular fringes here, so you can see this outside edge where it has little fringes off the side can be coarse to powdery, buff or cinnamon in color. So you can see this one's got like a little bit of a tinge to it where it's got sort of like a little cinnamon type color. The reverse side would be orange to brown. Macroconidia 
are very large, elongated, and you can see how they kind of look like little rowboats. Um, maybe like some old-fashioned type rowboats. They have, they're multi-segmented with three to nine of these um, little septa separations here. So you can see several of those. They are ecannulated. You can see that a little bit better here on these where they have those little prickly spines on the edge. The macroconidia are club shaped along the hyphae and there is one right here. Microsporium nanum or Microsporium nanum. It is transferred from animal to human. It rarely causes tinea corpus, but, um, and that's just from worm of the body. It can be transmitted from um, its host reservoir, which is the pig. Culture is flat, beige, brown, or white with orange reverse, and you can see that depicted in these top images. And you see how it kind of like radiates out. So that would be kind of characteristic of this organism. So you have the flip side here in this second picture. The microscopic um, microscopic images would appear as very small um, macroconidia. So you can see these are a lot smaller than the previous ones we've looked at. And then you can see the septa in them are about two of those, one or two of those. So you may see it in some, not in others. The microconidia are club shaped and they may be absent. And I don't see any really good ones here. This may be one small one here. Epidermophyton flucosium transmitted uh, man to man. This organism itself is very susceptible to cold, so specimens and cultures should not be refrigerated if you want to maintain these. It infects the skin and nails. Um, it does not infect the hair, uh, so that this can be ruled out as an a infection of the hair. Culture is slow growing and it can be olive to khaki colored or it can be a lot darker. Um, Suede-like, raised, and folded in the center. So you can see this top picture in the corner here where it, it kind of fringes out around the edges. It's got this khaki color in the middle, um, this brown color along the edges. So you can see where it's kind of a little bit of a darker color than it is here in the center. Um, you can see where the center kind of folds over itself a little bit. And then here at the bottom, you can see more of a close-up where that center just kind of starts folding over itself. And it's got a lot of that darker color to it. Microscopic appearance, you can see a very rare spiral hyphae. Um, but you can also see the chlamydia conidia here. Um, they are a multi-septate for the macroconidia here. You can, so you can see all those little septa in them. Um, it looks sort of like a beaver's tail and this bottom image shows that little beaver tail look where they're all kind of bunched together. And the microconidia is absent for this particular organism.